Surprise, surprise, surprise. The king is Max. <laughs> Max, uh, congratulations on a very fine performance tonight. Uh, you set all kinds of records, most significant strikes landed in the fight, in the round, uh, all these different things could go on and on. Did this performance surpass even your own expectations, or did you think it would go that way? Oh man, I uh, I always try to set the bar, you know. I told you guys, come set the bar, come bear, come beat me, I dare you, you know. And um, you know, I, I didn't break the records actually, or, or David actually did it for me, you know. He's taking a lot of punches, so you know, he, this is this is not one side. A guy was taking some damage, so you know, uh, you know, uh, tools with him, and uh, you know, onto the next, you know. Like I said, Bless Express is stopping TC, you know, all aboard, don't miss the seat. We're going to UFC Hawaii now. Dana, take me home. I want a, a virgin lava flow on the beach. Let's go. Yeah, um, you mentioned Brian's toughness. I mean, was, were you surprised that he was able to take some of those shots? You know, did he get a knockdown or anything like that? That he was just able to keep taking them? Not at all. You know, it's it is in our blood. You know, it's and uh, when you watch a Hawaiian fight like BJ, you know, you see him take some shots. You see me take some shots, and you watch Mexicans they can take some shots. You know, so. It's in his blood, it's in, you know, and when you see, say, fighting is in our DNA, you know, I think he got fighting, he got really fighting in his DNA, you know, in his heritage, they just like me, so, it is what it is, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's short week, and, uh, if that's max week, and he got to come to the deep water, you know, and we found out if we'll sink or swim, so, we just got to answer the question. Do you think they made the right call to stop it after the fourth round? I, you know, I was... You know, it sucks, you know. I was on some bad calls, some doctors, so I know how he feels, you know. But it is what it is. They're in there for our safety. If he was one more round, it's going to be one more round of the same thing. So, you know, the, the doctors are doing their job. And last thing for me, uh, Dana was in here earlier, and I'm sure you've been asked about it already. He wants you to go up to lightweight. And I kind of asked him, obviously, if you did that, you'd be giving up your belt. I'm sure there's certain things in your contract that are beneficial with being a champion and yeah. stuff. So when it comes to all that, I mean, do you need some sort of assurances if you do go up, whether it's a title fight right away, uh, certain things in your contracts, is that all part of it? You look, look, Dana White is the boss, you know, the boss is looking for super fights, you know. All the UFC guys, you guys, you guys be talking about me fighting at 55 for super fights. So if it's, if it's uh, you know, everybody keep, I keep hearing the name Connor, you know, Khabib, <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they got something to figure out. I think so. It's, some, it's after this fight, actually, right? The little press thing with that they going on. So hopefully they can figure it out. Wish the best of luck to them, and uh, and we can sit down with Dana. We'll figure it out. Tony Ferguson said he'd like to fight you. Hey, we see what happens. You know, that's that's, that's a fun fight. I, I mean, you guys watching Bedit? Someone called me Tony, so I got a bone to pick. <laughs> Max, you're 16 and 3 now in the UFC, 13 fight win streak. You just tied GSP, John Jones, Demetrius Johnson, and behind Anderson Silva. Not only, not only are you the, probably the greatest feather ever, you might be one of the greatest fighters of all time. Does that drive you to become the greatest MMA fighter ever? Yeah, uh, you're wrong. You know, I think I still believe the greatest featherweight of all time is Jose Aldo. And uh, you know, when I'm 30 or 31 or his age, then you ask me if I'm the greatest featherweight of, the, of all time, if I'm still here. But you know, at the end of the day, I just want to be the pound for pound number one. You know, I'm a champion. I'm defending my belt. Now I'm being number one. If it's up a weight class, it's up. If it's here, defending my throne. If I get to fight one of my good friends, the baddest man on the planet for that title, bring it on, Kung Fu Panda. I got you, DC. You know, Hawaiians, we love eating, and uh, I can see him very soon. <laughs> Max, I mean, over 300 strikes landed in that fight. Like you said, you broke all kinds of records. Uh, when you're just in there, though, and you're standing in front of this guy, and you're just hitting him with shot after shot, and he just is walking forward and not falling down, what is going through your head? Man, this, this guy got, I was just thinking, He's gonna be in here for five rounds, taking this much. I hope he's okay. But uh, so be it. It is what it is. <laughs> he's gonna get damaged, you know. That's just, that's my game plan. I take it deep waters, you know. I, like I said, if you're ready to, when you're ready to walk out that door, I'll hold your hand and walk you through that door, you know. But if not, if you, it's gonna tough it out, you know. Hey, tough man, good, good, uh, good for you. Yeah, I mean, you were coming off the longest layoff of your career, and I think. Uh, you have maybe a bit of a reputation as a slow starter, but you went in there and it, you were on fire early. Uh, it felt like you found your distance really quickly in that fight. 
did you, you know, did you really get into it really quickly as opposed to starting slow in your mind and what, what went into the... Yeah, you can thank my coaches for that. They let the, they, they loosen the leash on me on this one in like early in the round. So, uh, early in the fight, you know, in the back, they tell me, just be loose. Just go out there and do your thing already. Go attack. Every other fight, they're like, they're holding me, you know, like a pit bull, like just pulling me back and being like, hey, hold on, relax. And then it's like a retractable one, you know, so they just keep letting go of the tongue and letting it go. But, um, you know, this one, they say, go get it, go have fun. You know, I was, I was singing my walkout song, you know, I was talking to Ortega in there. I was talking to Joe every time I went back. I saw my son, told him what's up in there. He told me to keep my eyes on Ortega, so it was cool. So how good did it feel to get back? I felt great. I felt like a Canadian, eh? This is a tent island. This is ridiculous, you know? Hey, you guys switched up on me on one of the rounds, though. I heard them chanting Ortega, and I was like, wow. I was like, come on, guys. And then, like, they came right back around, and it was, and it was louder. So, hey, I love you guys, Tenth Island. You guys, you guys are the best. Well, hey, last one for me. I know you're still hesitant to do so, but I mean, Dana White was in here, and he said you may already be the greatest featherweight ever. Uh, what would it, you need to do for, in your mind, that to cement for you to become the greatest featherweight ever? Just keep winning. You know? I just gotta keep winning. I just gotta keep doing my job. Keep winning fights, and and let you guys keep talking about it. You know, but personally for me, I think Jose still is, and uh, I'm chasing him. You know, he said he set the bar. He still got a bar. I still gotta break it, and I'm setting bars for these guys. You know, people are saying that this new era, or whatever. You know, I'm setting the bar for the new era. I guess. You know, when the blessed era is here, the blessed era is gonna be in full effect. Congrats. Hey Max, congratulations on your win tonight. <laughs> Seeing uh, Brian's like performance though, like he was just a warrior in there. Like, would you grant him another rematch in the near future? Like, do you think he deserves one? We see what happens. That's not up to me. You know, I fight whatever. You know, you guys see uh, a bunch of my fights are short notice in here. You know, I took, I think I got like two fight, two three fights, or actually two fights that they actually let me fight on ten days. I don't care. You know, a couple hours. If Renato was ready for going one hour, I would have, I would have fought again. If they told me, hey, I'm not the ones to fight, hey, let's do it. Let's, we we would have did it twice, you know what I mean? But uh, that's just me, huh? That's my warrior spirit. Uh, last question is, you consider this the 10th island. Would you uh, want to come back headline for the third time uh, here in Toronto, Canada? Uh, we see what happens, you know? I love this place. Uh, maybe uh, try the summer, summer like this. <laughs> hey, a, little, a little bit warmer, please. But uh, if, it, if it's the first week of December, it's been a good week for me for the last three years, so... If, uh, if it's a fourth year in a row, then so be it, you know. And look, we packed this thing out. Ariel Wani said he thought GSP was fighting tonight, so uh, it's was, it was pretty dope, man. I love these guys, man. The fans here, you guys remind me of wines. They're warm. Like every, I'm walking through the underground city, which I didn't know was there until like midweek. We was walking outside like Hawaiian, been freezing. And then out, down underneath, you could just walk with no jacket. I was like, wow, guys, you really missed the job the ball on this one. So <laughs> it's cool, you know. I, I'll come back for sure. I love this place. It's the 10th Island, like I said. Hey, Max, the right hand. Was that something that you knew going into the fight was going to be there? Or was it just something that, it, you know, when you started landing it, I'm going to stick with this? Ah, uh, you know, we we uh, were just in there. I felt it, you know, I was letting it go. I don't even think I threw that much right hand to my camp. We did a lot of stuff. I just switched it up in there, you know. I got the tattoo blessed on top, down going my right arm, and I was like, ah, I might as well bless you as much as you can. So that's what happened. And then you talked about the fourth round. You said you told your corner the fourth round was going to be it. Um, that was really the time when you saw Ortega starting to back up. What did you see from him as he was weakening that round? You know, when you're in there, you see things. You know, I just, I just felt his energy dropping, energy dropping every round, every round. I, I heard his coaches talking, you know, in the first couple rounds, and he'd push, and then, you know, around like the third round and stuff, I heard his coaches talking, and there's no push anymore, you know, and and, and, and when I was coming out of the third round, I told Joe, this is the round, get ready to come in and talk to me, and then uh, when, when I didn't get the finish, I walked straight to Joe, and I was like, ah, this close, maybe next one, and then when they called the fight, I jumped the cage, the first guy I talked to was Joe, I was like, hey, I guess I was right, I take it back, we was there. Congrats. Oh, here. Max, after the fight, Brian went to talk to your son. Do you have any idea what he said to him? I don't know. What, what did he say to me, Bless? What? Uh, yeah, yeah, he probably wasn't listening, so... <laughs> what? The, to Brian. Did Brian talk to you? My opponent? No. Oh, yeah. He gave oh. knuckles. Oh, he just gave him knuckles? Yeah, yeah, Brian's a cool dude. You know, I heard an interview of him saying that if it wasn't fighting, we can be friends. And I told him, yeah, you know, like after whatever, you know, after this fighting thing, 
is done, I'll gladly come to California and hang out with you, you know. I don't know about right now, but like when we all said that and fight, I see you around, yeah, we could totally be friends. Cool dude, you know, so respect to him. Are you at all bothered that Moicano didn't make weight? Not at all. Like, like you know, like, it's hard. He, he's a, he, he was like an alternate, you know. Like, how do you get hyped up to be an alternate? When you make weight and you can't fight, it's kind of it's kind of shitty, you know what I mean? That's a shitty feeling, so I don't know how you push through to get there. And then when I walked in, we was in the same weight cutting room. So that was kind of like, I, I wasn't awkward. Like, I would have let them stay. Like, they, they left out of respect, I think. And that's cool. I love their team, you know, but... You know, I, and at the end of the day, it was just like, how do you get up for that? You know what I mean? How do you like sit there and be like, oh, like hoping, like he, we're fighters. If I was an alternate, I wouldn't want to hope him or Ortega was dropping out so I can get my shot. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to push for something that, that's not there to just do it. You know, if you, you ever tried to cut weight, it sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like, I, I don't give a hard time. I guarantee you give him the, the right time, the right opponent, you give him a time fight, he makes 45 for sure. Last question for me. Uh, you were supposed to fight Frankie Edgar at UFC 222. Uh -huh. um, we're hearing that you might be switching up to 155. Is that uh -huh. a name that you want to face before you move? Hey, Frank is a legend. You know, Frank is a legend. Like I said, uh, I saw Mark Henry. I mean, Mark Henry was talking, uh, talking, and I and I told Mark Henry, hey, if uh, if me and Frankie keep this up, we can catch up Khabib and Tony in the most misaligned fight. So, uh, but let's not do it, you know. So, but he's one of the legends. He's one of the good. You know, he got some injuries right now. And uh, if, when he figures it out, I'll be right here. I'll be right here, you know. And if it's 55, it's 55. Like I said, you know, the boss man, the guy is trying to make super fights. And all the UFC guys in the back I keep hearing them drawing names, you know what I mean? So we see what happens, you know. We see what happens. Uh, we got nothing but time on our side, so I'm here to stay, baby, you know. Like I said, is there anyone else? They're for Max, uh, when you look at the lightweight division, Dana said the top five fights, uh, top guys. Which one do you think you match up with best and would make the most fun fight with when you look at Habib or Tony, uh, Kevin Lee, obviously McGregor? Uh, is there anyone you look at and you think you would have uh, the most fun uh, fighting? Uh, you know, everybody talk about the top three guys. You know, everybody talk about Tony. Everybody wants to see me and Connor because we fought when I was a kid. You know, it'd be a long time ago. Dennis won. Dennis beat that max too, you know, Dennis Vermeer beat that max a couple of years ago. So, you know, the top 20 featherweights in the world, 30 would beat that max, you know. So, it is what it is. And then Khabib is another undefeated fighter, you know. I got this niche, you know, I guess. I just gave an undefeated fighter his first loss. So, maybe that might excite me the most. And we're supposed to have 